today. We are having other microphone problems just before the service began. There we go. A uh, couple of, um, you'll notice Bonnie McEwen's name in the prayers for sympathy. Bonnie died last night at about 1020. Bud and Bonnie have been longtime members of Messiah, and Bonnie had uh, breathing problems, and certainly Thursday when I saw them, she was breathing he heavily, but it was really quite a surprise. Um, then moving on for our theme, our gospel lesson, Jesus has a call to discipleship which uh, tells about the demands of, dis <coughs> dis <coughs> excuse me, of discipleship. And... Um, We'll also look at the prophet Jeremiah, which is our first lesson, and he is bitterly disappointed in his vocation as a prophet because life is too hard for him. By the way, I am suffering from um, a, a case of poison ivy. So if you are wondering what that is on my face, that's what that is on my face, as well as other parts of my body. <laughs> Let's begin our worship through the brief order of confession and forgiveness. Please rise. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. In the presence of God, who sees our hearts and our minds, let us confess our sin. God, our strength, we confess that we are captive to the power of sin that dwells within us. We put ourselves first and others last. What we think will make us happy leaves us longing for more. Even when we want to do what is good, we find ourselves doing the opposite. Rescue us from death's grip on our lives and raise us up day by day that we may be alive to God in Christ Jesus. Amen. Sisters and brothers all have fallen short of the glory of God. Therefore, we are justified by God's grace as a gift. Nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, in whom we have forgiveness of sin, life, and salvation. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Share God's peace by greeting those around you.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Teach us, good Lord God, to serve you as you deserve, to give and not to count the cost, to fight and not to heed the wounds, to toil and not to seek for rest, to labor and not to ask for reward, except that of knowing that we will do your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior and Lord. Amen. G. 
The first reading is from Jeremiah. O Lord, you have enticed me, and I was enticed. You have overpowered me, and you have prevailed. I have become a laughingstock all day long. Everyone mocks me. For whenever I speak, I must cry out. I must shout violence and destruction. For the word of the Lord has become for me a reproach and a derision all day long. If I say I will not mention him or speak any more in his name, then within me there is something like a burning fire shut up in my bones. I am weary with holding it in, and I cannot. For I hear many whispering, terror is all around. Denounce him, let us denounce him. All my close friends are watching for me to stumble. Perhaps he can be enticed and we can prevail against him and take our revenge on him. But the Lord is with me like a dread warrior. Therefore my persecutors will stumble and they will not prevail. They will be greatly shamed for they will not succeed. Their eternal dishonor will never be forgotten. O Lord of hosts, you test the righteous. You see the heart and the mind. Let me see your retribution upon them, for to you I have committed my cause. Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord, for he has delivered the life of the needy and the hands from the hands of evildoers. The word of the Lord. The second reading is from Romans. Should we continue to sin in order that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died in sin go on living in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore we have been buried with him by baptism into death so that just as Christ 
Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in the newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like this, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin, but if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death he died, he died to sin once and for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 10th chapter. Jesus said, A disciple is not above the teacher, nor a slave above the master. It is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher, and the slave like the master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebub, how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear of them. For nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered, and nothing secret that will not become known. But I say to you, in the dark, tell in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. And even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before others, I also will acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I also will deny before my Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father and a daughter against her mother and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And one's foes will be members of one's own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it, and those who lose their life, for my sake, will find it. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. I've got to tell you that... Uh, Two songs we are singing today, that opening song, was a song of lament. You probably don't know we have a lament section in our hymnal. It's a song of lament. And our hymn of the day is a song of lament. That one was written by a jazz musician after his wife and family were all killed in an accident. It's good for us to look at laments. So we're going to spend some time looking at Jeremiah and his lament. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. In The Messenger, I put a quote from Marty Babcock who said that the only thing Jesus ever promised us, now my apologies to any of you who, who might be caught up in um, prosperity, the prosperity gospel. But Jesus, 
Marty Babcock says, promised us only three things. That we would be absurdly happy, that we would be entirely fearless, and that we would be always in trouble. Isn't that great? Maybe you don't think so. We'll find out. We're going to look at those three. We're going to take them in reverse order, though. We should be always in trouble. Right? Now, I know you're looking at a guy, the most trouble he gets into is, is poison ivy in his own backyard. But we should always be in trouble, shouldn't we? Why can I say that? Well, Jesus said those words in the gospel lesson. If they call the master a follower of Beelzebul, or worse yet, Beelzebul himself, then they will also malign. They will also malign his disciples, those that follow him. So, Jesus was always in trouble. It follows that we as his disciples should always be in trouble. There's, there's a lot of things in this world to be troubled about. For instance, think of the... Oh, I, I, I had a, uh, an article this week about uh, a young woman by the name of Parzana in Pakistan who was murdered by her family. She was tricked into coming to court. And uh, when she got there, her family... 20 of them surrounded her and killed her. It was an honor killing. Her father said, uh, she dishonored me and the rest of the family because she was going to marry someone we did not give her permission to marry. Well, ironically, the person that she was going to marry, the young man she was going to marry, had strangled his wife so that he could marry Farzana. Now, if you're not totally disgusted by that and up at arms, but you know what? Yeah. Oh, by the way, in Pakistan, all the family has to do is forgive you and they won't prosecute. So, in the case where the man strangled his wife to marry Farzana, the son said, Dad, I forgive you off the hook for murder. Now all this father has to do, whose daughter was murdered, was receive forgiveness from his family, is off the hook for murdering his own daughter. Now, uh, if that shouldn't cause a feminist revolt among uh, people, I, I don't know what. But it's, it's easy to be upset about something that happens in Pakistan. Yesterday morning, I drove into the parking lot, and there was a car there. And I should have, I should be in jail because of uh, this car, a uh, newer model car. It was over at uh, Safe Haven. I'm, I'm assuming that's where it belonged, over at Safe Haven. Of course, Safe Haven is a place where uh, parents, uh, through the court, are considered unfit to visit their own children without a, being accompanied. So this car was parked over there, and the, it's bumper sticker. You know how we, uh, you see bumper stickers with families. They'll have little white figurines, usually stick figures, the father, the mother, couple of children, maybe a dog and a cat. Well, this one had various guns. You know, an assault rifle, a shotgun, and all the way down. And then put my family. Now, I'm going, now how could someone put that on their car? Now, I don't care if people love guns. I don't care if people own guns. Maybe I should. But I was upset in this country where 
family members are killing other members of their family, that someone would have guns and say, my family. I should have walked over to uh, Safe Haven and made a big stink. I should have been arrested. I made such a stink. I hope somebody would bail me out if I did. Don't you agree? There's just some things that we don't get upset enough about. We as Christians, if there's any cri criticism that we receive, is that we're too content to receive all the blessings and promises from God. But we don't want to do the dirty work. At Rotary this week, we had a presentation by two young women who were very excited about uh, a ministry. They were uh, bold enough at Rotary to say this is a faith-based ministry and it, it, the ministry they had was called Night Light Branson and they operate in Branson, Ozark, and Springfield. And what they do is visit strip clubs, they visit uh, young women who are on the street who uh, appear to be prostitutes and they talk to their pimps to get to know them, to share a positive message about God. To the women, they give gifts and many of them are very surprised that anyone would give them a gift, a nice gift. What is that ministry trying to do? They realize that women are trapped economically in the sex industry and being exploited, doing everything they can to help those women and get them out of that industry. Just think worldwide, 30 million uh, people are enslaved, 30 million, and most are women being exploited for sex. Now. How long do you think I'd last if every week I talked about that? I should be in trouble. I really should. Listen to what Jeremiah said. Jeremiah was always in trouble, and he lamented the fact that the people would not listen to him and was angry at God. So for three chapters, we hear about how angry he is with God. Chris read to you this morning, O Lord, thou hast deceived me, and I was deceived. Thou art stronger than I, and thou hast prevailed. I have become a laughingstock all the day. Everyone mocks me, for whenever I speak, I cry out, I shout, violence and destruction. He was predicting that Jerusalem would fall and be destroyed, and that the people of Israel would be taken into captivity it happened a year later. The people didn't want to hear the, him. What, did the, what does Jeremiah say? They're whispering, they're plotting for my demise. Even my friends want something to happen to me, something bad to happen to me. Jeremiah was always in trouble. The beauty of Jeremiah was he was confident enough in his relationship to God that he could be honest with God and cry out to God and say, Dear God, life is so unjust. Dear God, I think you are so unjust. But then at the same time he said, But I've got this burning in my bones. I cannot not shout out and proclaim your word. Well, we should all be in trouble, maybe all be in jail. Uh, Henry Thoreau was uh, one who often protested, uh, was involved in civil protests, and he was arrested. And a friend goes to visit him in jail and he goes, Henry, why are you in jail? 
And Henry looked at his friend and he said, why aren't you? Why aren't you? Yes, we should all be in trouble. Fearless. We are to be entirely fearless. Why? God is with us. He values. Just think, if a sparrow drops to the ground, God knows and cares about that. And he says, you are a value of, of more value than many sparrows. We care to God. God cares about us. If you remember 10 or 12 years ago, one of our members had their life threatened, was very concerned that if he came to church, we would be also uh, in harm's way. And what did we say? No. You know, if we really feel we're in harm's way, we'll stay home. But no, we're here. Even if it means to be in harm's way, we're here. Please come, worship with us. He's very proud of you. You knew that's exactly what Christians should do. Why? Because our lives are held in God's hands. What did Jeremiah say? Verse 11, but the Lord is with me like a dread warrior. Dread warrior is one who has all the armament, just looks as mean as can be, standing alongside, actually right behind uh, Jeremiah. So anyone who sees Jeremiah won't hurt him because God is like that dread warrior watching over him. He goes on, Jeremiah goes on, Therefore my persecutors will stumble and they will not prevail. They will be greatly shamed for they will not succeed. Jesus says, Do not fear those who can kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Well, we fear God. He's on our side. He's our dread warrior. It's like the cancer patient, the man who has cancer and chemo treatment after chemo treatment. And the pastor says, boy, aren't you, isn't this getting to you? Aren't you worried about what's going to happen? And he says, nope. I was, and oh yes, it bothers me once in a while, but you know, it's in God's hands now. I put everything in God's hands. Whatever happens doesn't matter. It's in God's hands. So, we are entirely fearless. And finally, absurdly happy. Absurdly happy. Are we? Maybe we're a little like Jeremiah, complaining. If there's ever a negative person, it was Jeremiah. Jeremiah even says this. It's not part of our text, but the, the verses right after our text, Jeremiah says, A curse on the day I was born, on the day my mother bore me, on the man who brought my father the news, why did that man not kill me in the womb? Can you get much more negative than that? So that the womb would have been my tomb. Why did I ever come out to live in toil and sorrow and to end my days in shame? Jeremiah was negative. And we could say, dear Lord, help us to be your disciples. Help us to live fearlessly, help us to get ourselves into trouble and help us, 
keep us from being negative. Norman Cousins, and many of you remember that name, editor of Saturday Evening Post, who tells about how at the age of 10, he contracted tuberculosis and was put in a tuberculosis asylum. And he said, even at the age of 10, he noticed that the children divided up into two groups. Those that were optimists, that felt their treatment was going to help and that they would get better. And the other group were the pessimists that felt that they had a disease that was going to kill them and the outcome would be their death. And he said for some strange reason the optimists and the pessimists would not associate with one another. And he said he remembers when a new kid was brought into the hospital. They'd always try to win them over to their camp. Come and join, we optimists, rather than those negative people. But he also said, even at the age of 10, we noticed that the optimists, their outcomes, those that got, that got well, more optimists got well, and more pessimists had their disease result in their deaths. Optimism. Well, knowing we're God's children, even the hairs on our head are numbered. Knowing we belong to God, having the great ability to cast all of our cares into the arms of Almighty God should make us absurdly happy. And then where do we find our purpose and meaning in life? Frederick Buechner said it best when he said, where our joy, the joy of being a child of God, the joy of being a disciple of Jesus, the joy of knowing I belong to God, where my joy and the world's need intersect, we know what our purpose is. And very often it's at that intersection that we should be getting ourselves into trouble. Amen. I'm glad I remembered I've forgotten this a couple of times. <laughs> Chris Moss and family, if you would please come forward. I see uh, Chris just about every day of the week. You'd think I'd remember on Sunday morning to receive he and his family as members. This, of course, is Chris, Sophie, Zayden, Honor, and Aza, and Tiffany. We do welcome you as members of Messiah Lutheran Church, and as I've said in the past, we don't want you to be mere pew potatoes. Everyone know what a pew potato is? Someone who just sits in a pew. We don't want you to be mere pew potatoes, all right? So you have something to do, and here's what that is. You are to join us in worshiping God, hearing God's word and sharing his supper, proclaiming the good news of God and Christ through word and deed, serving all people and striving for justice and peace in all the earth. If you are willing to do that, say yes by the help of God. 
Very good. And now, congregation, do you promise to pray for the moss, mosses, the moss family, to pray for them, to be workers with them in the kingdom of God, to do everything you can to help them in their journey of discipleship? If so, answer yes by the help of God. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for these new members of our congregation. By your life-giving power, bind us to each other in you, strengthen us for service, support us all our days, and bring us at length to that day when all your children will be one and you will be all in all. Amen. Welcome. Very good. Living to in trust and hope, we can find our faith.
Strengthened by the Spirit who gives us words to speak and hearts that care, let us bring our hopes and needs to God who listens. Dearest God, sometimes following you can be so unsettling when all we want is peace. We do thank you for consciences that make us ask questions. We thank you for allowing us to be uncomfortable when there are no easy answers. We thank you for making us in your own image, longing to take every hurting person under our wings. Thank you for just being God. Lord, in your mercy. We give thanks for the miracle of your hand providing life and growth. Help us all to be good caretakers of the earth and faithful stewards of your bounty. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for... We pray for healing words amongst peoples and places where violence, mistrust, anger, and division reign. Iraq appears to be descending into civil war. Ukraine and Syria are increasingly unstable. The Democratic Republic of Congo and Rwanda have both sent extra troops to their shared border after gunfire broke out. Hundreds of Pakistani families have fled from a surge of fighting between Pakistani government forces and militants. Send your spirit to bring much needed peace in our relationships, but also, especially, in our world. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for healing for those whose bodies and spirits are weary in pain. Especially, Maria von Brandt, Eric Carlson, Shonda Cartwright, Rosemary Decker, Robert Gipner, Richard Green, Mike Eisenberg, Jim Morocco, Angie Myers, Wayne Myers, Bob, Bud Norton, Jim Cuisenberry, Jean Richards, Sharon Severson, Gary Shoemaker, Barbara Starr, and Mary Thomas. Are there any others? We pray for healing hope for those whose loved ones have died. We Surround with your care and love the family and friends of those who have died, especially Jim McLeod and Bonnie McEwen. Lord, in your mercy. We lift our prayers to you, God of mercy, confident that all things are in your hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
God of mercy and grace, the eyes of all wait upon you, and you open your hand in blessing. Fill us with the good things at your table, that we may come to the help of all in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and salutary <laughs> that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you. O oh Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest land. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory now and forever. Amen. All is right, ready. Our Lord invites us. Please come. You may be seated.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. We thank you, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have fed us in a way our hearts can understand with the saving body and blood of Jesus Christ. Enliven us by your presence in this meal that we may be your presence in the world through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. I'm going to encourage you to read your messenger. And that's it. Receive this benediction. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the grace that sustains every breath we take, the love of God that gives us courage and strength, and the abiding presence of the Holy Spirit that fills our hearts with comfort and peace be with you and all those you care about now and forever. Amen. I forgot one thing. Excuse me. Sarah, come on up. Everyone can sit down for one moment. Sarah is leaving us. Sarah left us and went to Virginia, Pennsylvania. And she worked at a college there, a university there, came back to us, and now is moving to Nebraska to a... University of Wayne State, and she's going to work there. She's on our church council. Can you imagine how active she's become? She's in the choir. It, it breaks my heart to see you go. But you know what? You're going to be doing exactly what you need to do. So we're going to give you a farewell and Godspeed. I want you to kneel down right here. And we know you're going to find a new church home when you get there. But don't forget us. Well, I guess you won't. Eternal God, we thank you for Sarah and for our life together in this congregation and in this community. As she has a been a blessing to us, now send her forth to be a blessing to others through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Thank you, Sarah. Farewell and Godspeed. And now we will close with our sending hymn. Please rise.